Hi, welcome to my channel and thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Ghost of Chatterjee, and today I'm going to talk about how I clean and maintain my N scale diesel locomotives. I run my N-scale model railroad in DC and in my last video I talked about how I keep my tracks clean and some of the steps that I've taken to reduce my maintenance cycle. If you have missed that video you can find it by clicking on the card appearing right now or you can find it in my channel later after you finish watching this one. In today's video I'm going to talk about how I keep my motive powers in top running condition so that they can move at realistic slow speed during operating sessions. Now this video will be broken down in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about how I keep the wheels of the locomotives clean using very commonly available household materials. And in the second part, I'm going to talk about how I do detailed maintenance of the truck mechanism. Now before I proceed, here is a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button and then the bell icon so that you do not miss any new releases. I release three videos every month covering various topics of model trains, dioramas and scale model building in general, so I'm pretty sure you'll find them very interesting. Now coming to the first part. It is always a good practice to clean the wheels of all your locomotives in the roster before your operating session begins. Today I'm going to show you how I do it using isopropyl alcohol and lint-free paper towels. Now if you're using wheel cleaning products like these ones right here, you might want to skip this part and jump into the second part where I talk about the maintenance of the truck mechanism. First I remove all locals from the layout and turn the dial on my controller to full. Then I take a lint-free paper napkin and wet it in rubbing alcohol around one of the straight edges. I soak the napkin well so that it doesn't evaporate before the cleaning is complete. An alternative to paper napkin would be commonly available coffee filters. Whichever material you use, being lint-free is crucial, else it might just make things worse. I place the wet part of the paper napkin on a piece of track on my staging area where there are no ballasting, scenic material or other details around the track. I press on the wet part of the napkin on the track so that it sits on it properly. I hold the locomotive firmly with my fingers and put one truck on the napkin and position the truck to sit on the track over the wet part of the napkin. Then I carefully touch the other truck on the exposed part of the track. Since the controller is turned to max, the electrical connection is strong enough to work even with two sets of wheels, and as you can see, as soon as the truck touches the track, the wheels start spinning fast. This cleans the wheels that are on top of the napkin. I guide the locomotive all the while with both hands and even let it move a little on top of the napkin. Once one set of wheels are clean, you can do the other side the same way. As you can see from the amount of gunk deposited on the paper towel, the cleaning method is quite effective. While we see the cleaning method on my K2RTC, here are some points. The wheels to be cleaned should be aligned with the tracks for this to be effective. You might want to push the truck gently on top of the napkin while making sure that the pressure is not that much for the wheels to stop spinning. Once the wheels on the napkin sits properly on the track, it should be fairly easy. Coming to the second part of the video, I'll show you how I clean and maintain the drive mechanism in the truck assembly of my diesel locos. First, let's review the materials that I use. The bottle of isopropyl alcohol remains in this part as well, so does the lint-free paper towel. In addition, I use two pairs of tweezers, one straight, another angular, and a clean and dry paintbrush. 
Finally, one service I use lubricants to ensure that the gears and moving parts mesh and move efficiently. I have two types of lubricants, the regular grease and also the tri-powder lubricant. I'll be using the powder one today. For the main demonstration, I'll be using my Kato NW2 locomotive, the one that I use the most. After watching the detailed steps with this locomotive, don't forget to find the track disassembly procedure on a few of my other locomotives in the bonus section. The first step is to remove the cover of the truck assembly. I find a workable axis to use my pair of tweezers and then pry gently. Force should be applied incrementally and generally I take my time to assess the amount of force required. Any sudden increase and decrease would break the plastic housing and render the locomotive out of commission. The next step is to remove the wheels. For K2 NW2, the axles are supported by the pickups and the pickups in turn sit in a tight slot on the other half of the truck. While removing the wheels, the pickups slide out of the slot. Again, I'm extremely gentle while doing this and I always take time and assess the pressure that my fingers put on those tiny components. Also, notice how I'm holding down the truck housing of the wheels with my left hand to ensure that the force is regulated only to remove the wheels and is not distributed to the other parts of the truck. Once the wheels are out, I take out the warm gear from the drive shaft. The warm gear is slotted into the drive shaft and to remove it, I rotate the black plastic housing of the gear carefully till the slots are aligned and the gear slides out easily. The cleaning begins with removal of chunks of lint and dust. I generally use a pair of tweezers to remove the big invisible clunk of dirt and lint. Once removed of the big pieces, I use a paintbrush to thoroughly brush the components to remove small dirt and grime. The next step is to remove the spar gears. The first one is the gray one that meshes with the brass warm gear and the other spar gears in the gear train. The extended shaft makes it easy to take this one out of the slot. The other two are extremely tricky to remove, and this step is totally optional and should be done only after many hours of running. To separate these gears, first I use my tweezers to spread the housing slightly. Notice my finger positions on my left hand, where the index finger supports the gear housing and the middle finger helps retain the tension on the pair of tweezers to keep the housing slightly spread outward. Then I gently insert a toothpick between the gear and the housing till the gear pops out. Gear needs to be taken to do this in a relatively empty place, where you can track the tiny gear once it's out of the housing and not end up losing it somewhere on or under your busy workbench. Now that everything is disassembled, you can see the dirt and lint on these components that accumulated since I last did this over a year ago. To start the cleaning process of the gear housing, I turn to my trusted friends, isopropyl alcohol and lint-free paper towel. First, I wet a portion of the paper towel and then I wrap that around a toothpick. The toothpick is small enough to navigate through the tiny crevices in this housing and the moist tissue paper on its tip drags all dirt and grime out. I continue with the same method for the spar gears as well. Once the alcohol rub loosens the dirt and lint, I use a pair of tweezers to remove them. One of the important aspects of cleaning the gears is to clean the root fillet and the bottom land. I again take a toothpick and pry gently to encourage the dust and lint to separate and then remove them with a pair of tweezers. Notice that for all these activities I use toothpicks because they are hard enough to be effective and soft enough not to leave any scratch on the surface. I strongly recommend not to use any metal components for these kind of jobs. The next step is to clean the housing for the gear axis. The gear housing of the k 2 nw 2 has through holes on both sides of the axis, making cleaning much easier. I use a toothpick to poke on these holes. This pushes all the deposit in these tiny holes out, and then I take a pair of tweezers to clean them. Once the cleaning is complete, it's time to start assembling. First, the spar gears are pushed into their slots. Again, it is done carefully to ensure no unwanted stress is exerted on any of these tiny plastic components. After the gears are assembled, I test the meshing and free movement of the gears by rotating the gray one in both sides several times and noticing carefully if any of the gears are behaving erratically. Note that reliable running of a locomotive is as much dependent on the smooth running of gears as it is on solid electrical connection between the wheels and the rails. The next component in line is the brass warm gear. 
First, I remove the tiny flywheel on the outside to ensure that I don't lose it accidentally during the cleaning process. Then I take a lint-free tissue paper after soaking it lightly in isopropyl alcohol and use my nails to guide it through the thread of the gear to take out the deposit. And lastly, I use a toothpick to do the final cleanup. The last of the components to clean are the electrical pickup shoes. The method is no different from what you saw so far. I wet a portion of a paper towel in alcohol and then wrap it around the pointy side of a toothpick. Then I gently rub the inside of the axle groove to remove any dirt, grime and oxide layer. Care should be taken not to bend the copper strip. Given copper is a soft metal, it can happen easily and that might cause misalignment of the wheel and the pickup. Starting with the reassembly, the first component to reattach is the worm gear. The black plastic female part on the worm gear shaft has slots that slice through four tiny bulbs on the drive axle. I rotate the loco and the female connector on the worm gear axle to achieve proper alignment. Then I gently push the shaft when the slots are aligned to attach the gear to the axle and lay the assembly down in its slot. Next, I assemble the wheels and the electrical pickup shoes. First, I put one wheel in the respective slots across the two pickup shoes. Then I take the other wheel and align the slots in such a way that the axle groups hold the two axles steadily when I hold the two pickups between my thumb and forefinger. Then I carefully slide the assembly into the slot for the electrical pickups in the truck assembly. I make sure it clicks back into the slot. The next step is the first installment of lubrication. For this session, I use dry powder lubricant. The nozzle often gets jammed, so I simply take the nozzle out, use the tip to take a small amount of lubricant for my use. Then I place the lubricant on the warm gear and roughly distribute it on the surface. In the second installment of the lubrication step, I do the same on the spar gear assembly. This time I rotate the gear slightly so that the powder is distributed thoroughly throughout the gears. Now that everything is clean and lubricated, the last step is to put the spar gear assembly back to the truck. I make sure that the gray gear meshes with the warm gear and press the assembly gently till it snap fits with a small click sound. I continued with the same steps for the other truck as well before I was done with the maintenance of this loco. I can now run this little engine for many hours at slow speed just by cleaning the wheels before the obsessions as shown in the first part of this video. Now before I go, here is a bonus section showing disassembly of the truck mechanisms for three other diesel locomotives that I have. This will give you an idea of how it might work for other little engines. So how do you clean the wheels of your diesel locomotives? Would you attempt dismantling a truck yourself to maintain your locomotive's performance? Or would you prefer sending it to the manufacturer? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if this video was helpful for you, please provide your feedback by clicking the like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can receive notification of the new releases. Bye for now. Happy railroading.